Hello everyone and welcome to Lewis Fiction and welcome to what if the MCU followed the structure of the DCEU. In this thought experiment we're going to be exploring the idea of what if the Marvel Universe was essentially in the vein of the DCEU which was headlined by Zack Snyder. You guys have really enjoyed my restructuring videos so far on the MCU including my Arrowverse ones and my Spider-Man CW one. So today I'm exploring the idea of what if the MCU followed the DCEU structure. What if, in an alternate timeline, the DC Universe came first and the Marvel Cinematic Universe subsequently was playing catch-up to their rivals? What would it look like? Well, let's get straight to it. In this thought experiment, Marvel has just come off the back of a very successful Iron Man trilogy directed by Christopher Nolan. Despite their best efforts to expand that into a cinematic universe, it ultimately failed. Therefore, they had to start again and are now playing catch-up to their rivals, DC, who have just released their first team-up movie, The Justice League, in 2012. Therefore, in 2013, Marvel decide to headline their new universe with the Star and Stripes with the first Avenger, a film following the origin story of Captain America. The film would be very similar to the actual first Avenger movie that came out in the real MCU. Decent in quality, the story was mostly okay, and the characters were fairly strong. The film ends with Steve Rogers waking up from the ice, teasing the future. Most fans are on board with this new direction, excited about what is to come next. After the moderate success of the first Avenger, Marvel announced a brand new slate of films to release up until 2020, expanding upon their first Avenger universe. Those films include Captain America Civil War and The Thunderbolts to release in 2016, Thor and The Avengers Part 1 to release in 2017, Ant-Man and Black Widow will release in 2018, Spider-Man and Avengers Part 2 are going to release in 2019, finally, Hawkeye and a Black Panther film are going to release in 2020. However, what fans found weird about this is that there was no announcement of a second Captain America film or a solo Iron Man film. Moving into 2016, we see the release of Captain America Civil War. Because DC have just released their second Justice League film in 2015, Marvel consider themselves to be really behind. Therefore, they made the choice to follow through with the Civil War story this early in their universe. In this film, they introduce a rebooted version of Tony Stark different from the Christopher Nolan one, who is a little later on into his career, as it is revealed that he has been Iron Man for a while. However, Bucky Barnes, an old friend of Steve Rogers, is on the loose, controlled by Hydra. The rise of superheroes and superpowered beings causes the UN to introduce the Accords, a regulation for superheroes that would see their identities and rights belong to world governments. Tony agrees, saying that they need regulation. However, Steve sees sympathy in his old friend, wanting to save him, causing the conflict between the two. This film also sees the introduction of other major characters in the Marvel Universe, most notably Possibly Thor, who will be played by Chris Hemsworth, who has been on Earth for a while. This film is met with mixed reviews from fans and critics alike, due to its oversaturation of characters and the way that it rushed through development, especially for this version of Iron Man. Fans and critics also believe that a Civil War story between Iron Man and Captain America was way too early in the universe's history. They believed a few more solo films and a bit more build-up needed to happen first, before the Civil War story actually happened. And as fans fans start comparing the film to the comic, they realise that the story just wasn't done justice. However, despite this criticism, Marvel continued with their plans, releasing Thunderbolts next later in the year. However, despite some cult fans really loving the movie, most people hated it, making it the worst performing Marvel movie yet. However, a glimmer of hope arrives when Thor is released in the following year in 2017, making it the highest rated movie of the universe, generally loved by fans and critics alike. Plus, the film stars an absolute god that is Chris Hemsworth, so how could you not love it? This film tells an emotional story before the events of Civil War and how Thor discovered Earth in the wake of Loki's attempt to conquer it. However, this hope for the Marvel Universe doesn't last long when Avengers Part 1 releases in cinemas later in 2017 to immediate backlash. Most fans and critics describe this film as rushed, unpolished, and cringy. This film follows Ronin, a disciple of Thanos, who goes to Earth after Loki's failed attempt to conquer it trying to acquire an Infinity Stone held on Earth under the protection of S.H.I.E.L.D., which unites a team of superheroes. However, the film is messy with poor character development and story beats. 
Despite all of this, there are rumblings in the background that are potentially the film had been tampered with. When the director was replaced midway through the production, the film took an absolute tank in quality, with another version of the movie still out there, which according to several test screenings, is actually pretty good. Despite rumours and fan outrage as to what this potentially other film could have been, this wouldn't see the light of day for a few more years, as Disney and Marvel push it under the rug. However, this wasn't the only shady business going on at Marvel Studios during this time. Robert Downey Jr., who played Iron Man in both films prior, was set to write, direct, and and star in his own solo Iron Man movie that was meant to release among the upcoming Marvel slate. No official word of its release had been stated, but Downey was determined to make the film happen. However, Marvel did not trust Downey to direct and instead wanted most notable director Matt Reeves. This caused Downey to leave the project and leave the character of Iron Man altogether. After this massive mess from Marvel and Disney, the slate of upcoming films is consistently shuffled for a few months. The Ant-Man film is delayed along with Avengers Part 2, the Hawkeye film and the Black Panther film. The next film, Black Widow, makes its release, however, to semi-positive reviews. The same goes for the Spider-Man movie releasing in 2018, which also reaches its release date with no problem and meets semi-positive reviews. The Marvel Universe looks to expand upon its already successful entities and announces a sequel to Thor that's in the works and a sequel to Spider-Man. In February of 2020, Marvel decide to try and reinvigorate their Thunderbolts franchise by releasing a soft reboot and loose sequel to the first film. However, like the first movie, it's met with poor reviews. Later that year in December, the second Thor film is released, and the reviews aren't as strong as the first, but it's nowhere near as bad as the Thunderbolts. However, due to the creative differences and onset drama, a third Thor film doesn't look likely. During this time where many of the original films from the slate announced in 2014 don't look likely, fans of the original director for the Avengers films are campaigning more than ever to get the original version of the film released. That's when, during March of 2021, something special happens. We get Zack Snyder's Avengers, which is the film director's cut of the first film. This is met with overwhelmingly positive reviews from fans and critics alike, and puts into question the mentality and direction of Marvel and Disney for this universe. Fans start questioning whether they should have just let Zack Snyder do his thing all along. At this point, Marvel are throwing anything at the wall and just hoping it sticks, with two more films announced. A Thunderbolts movie directed by James Gunn, who in this alternate universe has made a name for himself directing DC's Suicide Squad films, which will be another soft reboot of the Thunderbolts characters, and another film with heavy influence from Hollywood star Dwayne Johnson following the Spider-Man villain, Venom. Both films are released and James Gunn's Thunderbolts is met with overwhelming positivity, with the direction that he was able to take the characters in. The same, however, couldn't be said for Dwayne Johnson's Venom, despite the actor claiming that the Marvel Universe is about to change forever. During the post credit scene of Venom, however, the much-beloved Chris Evans' Captain America returns, hinting at the universe finally receiving a direction, and potentially Captain America getting his much-deserved sequel. However, the poor reviews of Venom cause Marvel to rethink their plans, with a Spider-Man sequel, a Black Widow sequel, Ant-Man, Dark Hawk, all films that are still confirmed and happening, Marvel are put into a problematic position. And then it isn't until November 2022 that Marvel would finally decide to scrap this failing and dying universe and look towards starting all over again. That is when it is announced that James Gunn, who successfully brought critical positivity and flair to the Thunderbolts to lead a brand new rebooted Marvel Universe. The rest of the universe's films all come out to relatively mediocre reviews, not setting the world alight in any sort of way. And from here, a brand new Marvel Universe under the direction of James Gunn is then announced as Chapter 1. The projects for this new universe that are announced are as follows. The Howling Commandos, the animated series. Ross, the live action series. Captain America Legacy. Wakanda, the live action series. The Thunderbolts. Tales of Asgard, the live action series. Iron Man Heart of Gold. Ghost Rider, the live-action series, Falcon, the Captain of Tomorrow, and Man-Thing. These films are all going to production under James Gunn's new universe, with Captain America Legacy being the first one that James Gunn will personally direct himself. And with that, that is what if the MCU followed the DCEU structure. 
Either way, James Gunn eventually ends up taking over, and the Marvel Universe does look to have some sort of positive outlet in the end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and let me know in the comments below any other video topics that you'd like me to cover. I really have fun with these type of videos and you guys seem to be enjoying them as well. So let me know in the comments other styles of videos you'd like me to make. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like on it and also make sure to subscribe for more videos. On the screen right now, here's some more videos that you can watch if you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and keep writing stories.